SpaceX has conducted the first test flight of a fully integrated Starship, carrying 1,200 metric tons of propellant and producing double the amount of thrust of a Saturn V. The largest rocket in history cleared the launch pad at Starbase, Texas. It throttled down its engines, reached max Q, went past it, it then throttled its engines back up again, and just before stage separation, at an altitude of around 37 kilometers or 23 miles above the water, Starship experienced an anomaly and began spinning out of control. Shortly after that, SpaceX decided to terminate the flight using the appropriately named flight termination system. Now let's have a closer look at this short but equally spectacular and historic flight, including some of the things that went wrong with it. Beginning at liftoff, we can see that it takes a moment for Starship to lift off the launch mount. Now, according to SpaceX, the hold down clamps had been already released 15 minutes before T0, so it was a matter of throttling up the engines to a high enough power for Starship to finally lift off. Now, we can clearly see when this happens, since there seem to be big chunks of debris be being thrown really high into the air, like this is around 100 meters into the air, and the images I'm about to show you in a little bit will explain a lot. Now we can can't really appreciate this from SpaceX's livestream, but if we take a look at NSF's livestream, you can clearly see that Starship lifts off the pad with a little bit of a tilt going on there, but then that tilt gets quickly corrected and the rocket goes straight up for a while before beginning its nominal tilt, which every rocket has to do to make an orbital insertion, or in the case of this first flight of Starship, a semi-orbital insertion since it was planned to re-enter near Hawaii just shy of making a full orbit. Now, immediately after Starship begins gaining altitude, we see that a total of three engines out of the 33 Raptor engines in the booster seemed to have failed. It is yet unclear whether they did not start at all or if SpaceX shut them down after engine ignition. Now, during the ascent phase, we see two more Raptor engines fail. One of them seems to have undergone a rapid unscheduled disassembly. We can clearly see some debris coming out of that explosion. Now, despite the loss of these engines, the remaining 28 were definitely enough for the rocket to keep climbing up. We heard the call out for Max Q, and then all seemed to go decently well up until the moment when stage separation should have occurred. We can see from the onboard camera that Starship begins to roll, and then shortly after that, it begins to just spin out of control. As it becomes clear that stage separation is not happening and that the vehicle can no longer be saved, SpaceX detonates Starship's onboard explosives, wrapping up the first test flight. It is unclear why Starship began to roll and spin like that, but there are several hints. One of them could be the uneven amount of thrust from the engines due to some of them not functioning. There is also this picture right here of Starship's ascent, where you can clearly see that the rocket is kind of hunched down or crumbled, and honestly this could also very well explain why it ended up spinning out of control. Still, this was by all means a successful flight, Starship made it past max Q, and most importantly it did not explode on the launch pad. Although that being said, the launch pad itself did take a massive amount of damage and we're going to have a look at it right now. First and most impressive and shocking of all, look at this crater underneath the launch mount. What the hell? It almost looks like a bomb went off or something. Now, SpaceX is planning on installing a water deluge system underneath the ground around the legs of the launch mount. But seeing this, I don't know if that's going to be a valid replacement for a proper flame trench. You have to remember, this is like two Saturn V rockets firing at the same time right here on a flat concrete surface. And you can see the destruction this caused in the surrounding area. There is a lot of debris lying around. Most of the camera equipment has been tipped over. There was black smoke rising from the ground, indicating some sort of fire. At least one of the cars from NSF got severely damaged by the debris. Some of the tanks at the orbital tank farm got dented, it seems. Boom lifts, I mean, it's a good thing that the rocket did not explode on the launch pad, but holy cow, is this a lot of damage. So, needless to say, SpaceX will learn a big deal out of this test, and these learnings will inform and dictate their future decisions. Booster 9 and Ship 26 seems to be slated for the next launch attempt, although I would wait until SpaceX has assessed the damage to the pad and made a decision on how to safely proceed with the next launches. 
I am very happy with this launch and I hope you're too. It's really a shame to see all the damage that the launch pad took, but uh, it is what it is. We'll see what happens from here on. I cannot wait to see what comes next. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.